The impossible made possible. Hey guys, welcome back to another Scratchcraft video. It's LJ here. So today we are going to do the impossible fold card. Now this card and video has been taken direct from Twitch, which is why you can see the border and all the fun bits on there. As always, I will link all details to Twitch down in the description. It's basically like a live stream version of YouTube. It's just another platform where you can watch videos. Um, there's a lot of viewer interaction and fun and games we play over there, so it'd be lovely to see you. Um, some of this I am going to play direct, some I will do a voiceover. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoy. I'm going to start off showing you this with a 5x7 size card, but you can do it at any size, which I will show you later on. <laughs> Bless her. Um, so if you have a scoreboard, I find it easier to score it, but if you don't, you can just fold it in half. So I'm going to show you the simplest way with no real tools. So fold it. You can fold it either direction. I tend to prefer it landscape, but you can fold it portrait as well. So fold it in half, get a nice fold right down the middle. This card is a bit thick, it doesn't want to fold. Mm -hmm. There's one side, there's the other side. Sorry, my kitten. There we go. Oh, that has crumpled completely. So you can fold it in half, but I'm going to score it. Just so it doesn't crumple, because unfortunately that doesn't look very neat now. You know, you can't see it because of the reflections, but it's all... Yeah, there you go. You can see all the... All the wrinkling okay so five by seven so i'm going to score this at two and a half which is our middle that you can always just fold it there we go <laughs> so fold it in half and then one half you need a kitten one not helpful pencil and ruler where is my pencil my pencil is over there that is why i can't find it okay so pencil and ruler one side you're going to find the halfway point so mine is seven so my halfway point is three and a half And then I'm going to draw a line up to that middle fold line. So I've just drawn half up to the middle. On the other side, we're going to come in one inch from each end and do the same. So one inch there, one inch there, and again, join that up to the middle. So this side is halfway, this side is one inch in from each side. You could make this wider, do two inches. I just like the look of the one inch, it gives you a nice large panel to work on. So now you've got three pencil marks, the cat is overexposing it, there we go. We're going to cut all three of those. So I'm just going to cut straight to the middle. So there's that side, straight to the middle on this side. Now we've got two little bits there and then straight to the middle here. So I've just cut those three pencil marks and now I'm going to rub them out. 
because I'm using white card we can see them so I'm going to rub them out because actually I'm going to use my bigger rubber just to make life easier down the middle yeah my big rubber <laughs> I, I just can't get used to calling it a razor we called it a rubber all the way through school so it's just kind of in my head <laughs> glad it can amuse other people <laughs> so step one you fold it down the middle step two on one side find halfway and then you can cut straight away or draw your pencil line and cut. On the other side, come in one inch and then cut from each end. You can make those cuts wider. You could do one and a half or two. I just like the look of the one inch. Um, this is just sort of a standardised card cut you can use on any size, but you can adjust these once you know the process and you feel more comfortable. Okay, so now we've got the three cuts. What we're gonna do, put it so you've got the halfway cut in front of you, hold one side and then fold the other side under. So start it here, hold the left side and fold the right side underneath. And now we have this card that doesn't look like it's possible because you've got a small cut there and a small cut here so how is there this large piece in the middle so that's what the bottom will look like so I'll show you again hold the left side take the right side underneath and there is your impossible fold card your center piece will stick up and then we can decorate but there's a couple of things to consider if you're going to give this card to someone who is likely to try and figure it out then you can add a strip like this say here to hold it in one place i tend to use only use this occasionally what I will often use is acetate so then you can't see it um, but yeah that is it that's how simple it is and then when it goes in the envelope it will lie flat being the same size as the piece you started with so this will fit inside my five by seven envelope not that you can see because it's a white card on a white envelope but it will fit inside there like normal this card is good for other card makers or for other crafters because they want to figure out how one piece of card has made this shape and then all we're going to do is decorate it so for this one for an example I am going to use a strip but I'm going to use a thin strip so I'm going to cut this down to Let's cut it at an inch. Yeah, an inch will work. You could make it the full length. You could make it really tiny. This one is, if you want to create it exactly the same as me, this is five inches. So it's the piece that was cut off of there. And I'm just adding it on the top here so you've got two pieces you've got your impossible fold card and you've got your joining strip you can do this in the front or in the back in the past I've done it on the back to try and disguise it 
um, but for this one I'm going to do it on the front. So then you've got these weird pieces to um, create design paper for. So I'm going to grab a piece of red card just because I've got it next to me. It's the only reason I'm using red. Um, we know that this is three and a half because my card is seven. So I know that half of it is three and a half. I know, Dusty, I saw one in my collection. I was like, that's what I'm going to make today. So because this is three and a half, I'm going to cut three and a quarter as my map. This is five. So I'm going to cut four and three quarters. So we're just going to cut a rectangle. Okay, so this piece will sit nicely on here with an edge but the easiest way to do the next piece is to turn it over and line it up here so if you line it up flush against this edge and draw around it that's going to give you the template for your design paper alternatively you can measure it so this piece will be three quarters of an inch yep and this piece will be five two and a half so two and a quarter which it is so now this template will sit on this side and give you a perfect white edge but it will also sit on this side and give you the white edge so let's start by doing our design paper so all you then need to do is just draw around this line it up on the edge Don't include your finger. So that piece will sit there, but I can't cut the same shape for this side because then when I flip it, it will be back to front. So I need it this way round and you can try and cut next to this. It's not going to be exact, but it will give me the best use of paper. And although I keep saying this is the easy way to do it, there's nothing wrong with this way of doing it. Nothing wrong at all. I just personally prefer the more complicated way. It's a lot, it's a bit more work. It's a lot more work, I'm not going to lie. It is more work, but I think it just looks better. I think the finish is better. But, you know, everyone has their own opinion and you can do it whichever way works best for you. There is absolutely nothing wrong with doing it this way at all. Nothing at all. And when I've finished, you'll see that each way has its benefits and its drawbacks, whichever you like. So then this piece, gosh, cat fur everywhere, will sit nicely on here and this piece will sit nicely on here. When it comes to your support strip, I am just doing the same thing. So I'm matting this piece. So it was one by five. So I'm going to cut a strip that is three quarters by four and three quarters. I'm just going to stick that onto the strip using the same paper so that it um, 
matches in with the card, it coordinates. And then all we're going to do is that piece is going to stick along either the front or back, as I said, to add some security and give your card just a little bit more strength so that it doesn't wobble around all over the place. And it just sits nicely there like that. Um, yeah, works with or without this strip. It's totally your choice. OK, so that is the card completed and decorated, as you can see. So I added um, a slightly different paper, one with the holly on for the centre panel and then a little topper from the paper pad. I made three little flowers for the base, two for the top. And then on the back here, you could either print something or stamp something or just write your message. It's totally up to you. As stated before, it will fold flat and go down into the envelope. Don't copy me here. You need to fold that upright panel forwards, not backwards. Um, but it does fit neatly into your envelope so it can be posted, not a problem. And then when it comes out, it will stand up, which is why that panel needs to be fo folded forward, not backwards. <laughs> but yeah, there's that one. Now let's show you some different sizes. OK, so for those of you in America, we're going to start with a four and a quarter by five and a half. Again, score a fold at halfway. Then on one side, you're going to draw a pencil line at halfway up to that middle line. Apologies, I know the cat makes this a bit difficult to see, but I will move her in a second. So there's your halfway line. Then we're going to come in one inch from each end. So do this end, it's going to be at one inch. This end, it's going to be four and a half. Do those again up to the middle line. Then we're going to cut them. And I rub out my pencil line just because I'm using white card, but you don't have to. Hold the two halves in your hand. Hold the left one and turn the right one underneath. So hold the left one, turn the right one underneath. Same for any square. This is six by six, but you could do four by four, five by five, eight by eight, ten by ten. One half, fold it in half, one half do the halfway line. The other side do one inch from each side. Cut those lines up to the centre point. And then hold the two halves in your hand. Hold the left still, turn the right under. OK, and I promised you a harder version. Um, I just think this way looks slightly nicer. I'm again going to use a five by seven. But this time, rather than doing a landscape design, we're going to do a portrait design. And the only reason I like this better is just I feel the finish is slightly better. But you are more than welcome to do the first design, first technique. It is completely up to you. So I'm just going to show you the differences in this design. So first thing we're going to do, rather than score the half line, we are going to just do a pencil mark along that central line. So this time, rather than scoring it, I've just drawn the pencil line. Then we're going to do everything else the same. So here is five, so two and a half. I'm going to come in one inch on each side. We are only going to score between those two one inch lines. So rather than folding it in half, we're just going to do a score between those two lines. So I'm putting it in my scoreboard and I'm just going to score from there to here. So I've only scored along that middle section. Okay, then we're going to do the rest the same. So we're going to cut up to that line. Cut up to that line. Cut up to that line. I'm again going to rub out all my pencil marks. Okay. We're going to do exactly the same thing. Hold this in our left hand, turn the right one around. 
but now there's no score lines on these edges so now you can see it's the same size but you get a very different look and the only real difference here is that these bend and these don't these are straight which makes it harder for someone to work out what's going on and i think it looks neater because if you look on the bottom you can see the score line and you know what i'm like with those annoying details so i prefer to do it without the score lines but it works whichever way you do it the two looks then with and without the strip so this one has the acetate in the background that you can't really see okay so here's a better look at how you put it into the envelope fold the designed panel forwards so you can see your message and then pop it into the envelope that way this will ensure that when you take it out it's going to stand upright rather than fall backwards so now when i take this out of the envelope you can see it's a little bit forward and then over time it will slowly sag backwards a tiny bit but it will be upright whereas straight away this larger one is leaning backwards because i bent it the wrong way but once it's in an envelope face down you'll see again that you can take it out and then it will stand more upright i know the kitten is blocking things at the moment but um then it will stand more upright like so as you can see okay that's all from me today guys if you have enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing it means the world to me here's a final look at the two cards you can see the two different styles portrait landscape and with and without that strip thank you so much for spending time with me today guys keep crafting and i'll see you all soon bye